Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Now, let's look in at the United Nations. Uh, the most important speech in the General Assembly, I would say, is the one by Sarkozy, because out of all of this terrible situation with Wall Street Democrats, reactionary, even fascistoid Republicans running around, uh, what's, what's the way out of this? How do you try to stop this uh, sellout of Social Security which is the likely uh, outcome with these two gangs of uh, reactionary bandits uh, making uh, essentially a deal in the infamous lame duck session that's coming up. Well, um, the Tobin tax. Tax the banks. Make Wall Street pay. The big question today is who should pay for the depression? We have a world economic depression. It's expensive. It costs in the mega trillions. Who should pay? Ah, the Koch brothers. David Koch and his friends, they have a program. Rupert Murdoch has a program. So does George Schultz. We pointed you previous, uh, to the previous week to uh, the George Schultz program, right? The, uh, the guidelines for economic uh, recovery, or whatever he calls it, in the, uh, in the Wall Street Journal, uh, which is uh, his plan to make you pay for the world economic depression. Uh, if you don't want to pay uh, the price, then you've got to have an alternative. Otherwise, what they'll do is say, look, uh, the world derivatives panic uh, of 2008 and the collapse of the banking system is your fault. And therefore, we're going to take away your Social Security, your Medicare, your Medicaid. This is what was done under Brüning in Germany between the spring of 1930 and the spring of 19. 19- 32, and it set the stage for National Socialism, for Hitler. It destroys the political system, and it destroys the economic system as well. And this deflationary path is what the reactionaries are demanding. Remember, Wall Street Journal, September 16th, George P. Schultz, Principles for Economic Revival. Uh, Let's just tick them off so you recall Take tax increases off the table. In other words, special breaks for the rich. We've just heard it, right? The LLCs and S-Corps uh, of the super rich. Second, balance the federal budget by reducing spending, gouge, uh, and all kinds of uh, discretionary services. Third, modify Social Security and health care entitlements. That would be Medicare and Medicaid to reduce their explosive future growth. That means you die for the sake of the bottom line. Uh, Then we have a fourth, enact a moratorium on all new regulations. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got another one, I think. Uh, Anyway, the fifth, monetary policy should be less discretionary and more rule-like, I guess, rigid. Um, That's the idea, right? And you can see that the Republicans and indeed the Tea Party follow in the wake of the George Shultz, Rupert Murdoch wing of the ruling class. But now... The alternative, that the banks should pay, that the finance oligarchs should pay. Uh, and that's the Tobin tax, right? We've talked about it. It's the securities transfer tax, the financial transaction tax, the Robin Hood tax, the Wall Street sales tax, because that's what it is. It's a sales tax on them. You pay sales tax on what you buy. They should pay sales tax on what they buy. And since we're so moderate, right, no Bolshevism here, we're not asking for them to pay the sales tax in every state, that would be good. It might even be uh, an optimum, but just, let's just be reasonable. We're just talking about a 1% tax. Now, the general principle of the Tobin tax, uh, understood as a financial transaction tax, has now been embraced from the uh, podium of the U.N. General Assembly by the president of France, Nicolas Sarkozy, who is one of the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. And he points to the fact that the Millennium Development Goals are now in danger because the budgets that have been uh, assigned to this are totally inadequate. And indeed, they started with almost $2 billion, uh, in extreme poverty. They started uh, in the 90s with 2 billion people living, existing at less than a dollar and a quarter per day and their hope is to get that just a little bit below $1 billion by 2015. So you'd come out of this with the best-case scenario, which is very unlikely, practically excluded, that you'd have 
little bit less than 1 billion people in 2015, after 25 years of economic globalization, that are living at less than a dollar and a quarter. And on top of that, you'd probably have about 2 billion who are living at less than $2 a day. And as Sarkozy says, budgets everywhere are under pressure. If you wanted to get some more resources to do something about this, where would you get it? Well, the obvious thing is a financial transaction tax. Make the bankers pay. Make the finance oligarchs pick up the damage bill, the tab, for the mess that they have created. And above all, make them stop the genocide in the underdeveloped countries, the less developed countries, the third world, which is the result of their policies through the International Monetary Fund and so forth. Now, what could it mean? Sarkozy obviously uh, imagines this as being a very small tax that would then go probably, in his view, to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. No, no. We're, we're happy to have the discussion, and we, we thank the president of France for putting this on the agenda. And he says that he's going to put it on the agenda, and he's going to keep it there. He's going to keep this in the public eye. He's going to talk about this at the G20 and at the G8, so the main meetings of the economic powers of the world, starting in November when Sarkozy will be the president of this group. He'll have the chairmanship. And I believe he'll do it because this is part of his re-election campaign. We'll get to that in just a minute. But now let's, let's put our Tobin tax, our financial transfer tax, our Wall Street sales tax on the table. What do we demand? Well, we demand a 1% tax. Uh, and let's just see what would be the worldwide impact of this. We pick up the famous Wall Street Journal once again, and we find that the turnover in uh, currency markets, this is foreign exchange markets and foreign exchange markets alone, is now up to $4 trillion a day. $4 trillion with a T. $4 trillion per day. Now that means with a year of 250 business days, you are talking one quadrillion of yearly currency turnover worldwide just in foreign exchange and currency markets alone. This includes certain kinds of derivatives that are, that are issued in these, uh, in these regards. Um, the article also lists uh, relatively smaller amounts that come out of uh, the, uh, the, for example, the, um, the U.S. Treasury market is about half a trillion per day. And the U.S. stock market, not much at all. U.S. stock market, about $140 billion, uh, per business uh, a day. So uh, this also not a whole lot uh, compared to this uh, foreign exchange, which is a great deal. But these things also can add up. So if it's $1,000 trillion, one quadrillion of turnover just in foreign exchange, just in, in the currency markets, a 1% tax gives you what? 10 trillion dollars. Think of that. Ten trillion dollars. Now, what should happen? Should that go to the World, the world Bank? No. Should that go to the International Monetary Fund? No. It should be disposed of according to the needs of the sovereign states of the world, not by financier oligarchs from London, New York, Frankfurt, Tokyo, wherever it is. We don't need this. Oligarchs from Russia? No, no, no. But rather, let's look at the, at the needs of humanity. Look, we've just had the Pakistan floods. Let's focus on Pakistan and the Indus River Valley. Huge floods, thousands dead. What are you going to do about that? You give the Indus River the full Tennessee Valley Authority treatment with dams. You get irrigation. You get flood control. You get hydroelectric power. <laughs> and you wipe out malaria. We'll be back in just a minute. 